in the name of Jesus. I'm sure many of you have heard people use the expression, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Is there power in the actual name itself? Jesus. Well, let me help put things into perspective. Now, before I begin, let me use an analogy. Let's say that uh, in the space race back in the 60s, uh, many of you might not be old enough to remember that, Russia versus the United States. But let's say that the United States landed on the moon and one of the astronauts planted the American flag in the soil of the moon and declared in the name of the United States. Now, is the astronaut saying that there's power in the actual name or title United States and that it was the United States who landed there first? But there's no power in the actual name United States. So if someone says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus or I cast out demons in the name of Jesus, there is no actual power in the name itself. Now, let me digress one more time. In the Greek scriptures from Matthew's Revelation, and many of you know that as the New Testament, that's written in Greek. There is no letter J in the Greek alphabet. If you look at the older manuscripts of the uh, King's James Version, for example, you will not find the letter J in those older manuscripts. You will find Jesus' name, John and others whose names begin with today, a J with an I. Iosis, Isis. So there is no actual power in the name Jesus itself. So what is the power in? In his office, that is what he is. He is the Son of God. He is the Word of God. And God has given him permission and infused him with power to act in his behalf. It's in that sense, in the name of Jesus, that there's power. So to say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, or I cast out demons in the name of Jesus, that itself has no meaning. There's no power in that. And many missed a boat on that one. It is what that name represents. All of the other sons of God are not the only begotten. Only begotten means that God created this one, the son of God, directly. First, the first creation of God. And this is written at Colossians chapter one, verse 15 and also at Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. So all of the other angelic hosts are not only begotten. They were created through that first creation by God, the one that the world knows as Jesus Christ. So there is no actual power in the name Jesus. There's power in his office. That is who he is. The Son of God, even demons recognize this. When Jesus was walking through uh, the tombs, there were some demon-possessed men who came out from the tombs, and uh, the demons cried out, Son of God. They didn't say Jesus, they said, Son of God, do you come to torment us before the time? So even demons recognize this one that the world today knows as Jesus as the Son of God. So it's in that sense. It is in who he is, the Son of God, not the actual name Jesus itself. I remember many years ago, I was talking to a woman. I think she was a holiness because she just couldn't uh, stand still. She kept going back and forth, pacing back and forth like she was demon possessed. And when the conversation concluded, she says, I rebuke you, that is me, in the name of Jesus, because what I was uh, talking to her about, she wasn't taking it. Namely, that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is not God. 
she believed in this trinity. And that's when she became agitated and started pacing back and forth. It was only at that moment that she began to pace back and forth. She couldn't stop. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. And this is not the only time I've seen this. Oftentimes there are Christians when you have these discussions with them about things that Jesus did not teach, then they become agitated. Some become agitated in different ways, like this woman who's pacing back and forth. Others become agitated by, by becoming frustrated and angry at you. But she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, as if she was casting a spell on me or something. That doesn't do anything. When persons pray, and at the conclusion of their prayers, they'll say things like, in the name of Jesus. That has no power, the name itself. It is what that name represents. That is who he is. He's the only one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. Back in Jesus' day, the name Jesus was a very common name. So there's no power in the name itself. It is what that name attached to this person, God's only begotten son represents. And plus, when one prays to the Father, you don't have to verbally say, when you conclude your prayers, in the name of Jesus, amen. You don't have to say that because God knows in your heart whether or not you're being sincere or not. And he also knows what you are asking before you even ask it. So if a person says, in the name of Jesus, when they conclude their prayers, that's ineffective. If you are a staunch follower and disciple of Christ, God will know that. Others might not know that, but God knows that. So when you approach the Father in prayer and you ask him for things such as uh, wisdom and knowledge and understanding, I'm not referring to material things because he's going to provide for that. But the things that the, the treasures of heaven, namely wisdom, understanding, knowledge, that is his wisdom, his understanding, and his knowledge, his discernment, we can rely upon our own. He knows that you are listening to his son, the one he commanded us to listen to. So by saying, when you conclude a prayer, in the name of Jesus, that means nothing. God knows what's in your heart. He knows whether or not you are listening to his son and doing to the best of your ability and power to obey what his son has commanded. Many people think that prayer is some kind of a magical spell. People will say, well, I'm going to pray for you. No, don't, please, don't, don't pray for me. Each and every one of you have the power and the ability to approach the Father yourself and Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 to verse 8 Jesus taught us how not to pray first he says don't be like the hypocrites who like to stand out in the public squares to be seen by men and or seen by others see they're getting their reward already today many people pray in front of other people that's not proper because Jesus goes on to say that, but when you pray to the Father, go into your closet. But going to your closet is not enough. He's not referring to a literal closet necessarily, but he also says, close the door. He's referring to privacy because he goes on to say, close the door and pray to your Father in secret because he's gonna hear you in secret. We are not to let our left hand know what our right hand is doing. If you pray in front of others, then you're letting them know what the, what the left hand is doing. You want them to see you praying. When Jesus prayed, he withdrew from his disciples and he prayed to his father in secret, in private. And then in Matthew chapter 6, being at verse 9 and onward, then Jesus says, this is how you shall pray. So first he talks about there at Matthew chapter 6 beginning at verse 5 how we are not to pray and then beginning at verse 9 he teaches us how we are to pray 
But our prayers to the Father should be individual prayers. Your prayers and my prayers are for the, between me and my Father and between you and your Father. That is the one God. It is not for me to know what you're praying about or to even see you praying. I never, and I used to, I never pray in front of others so they can see me praying. When I pray, I may, I can sit here, for example, and recede back into the recesses of my mind and pray silently, but you wouldn't know it. Or I might feel the need to go into a proper place uh, in my house if the other person's around and pray in private where others will not hear me and will not see me. This is how one should pray. And when I pray, I don't say in the name of Jesus because the Father knows that I am his disciple. I simply say, when I conclude my prayers, I may say amen, but I thank the Father for listening to me. I'll say things like that. But I don't have to say in the name of Jesus because Jesus is already with me and within me. God's Holy Spirit is within me. So it's already there. The words have no power. So again, keep this in mind. This may upset a lot of people that there's no letter J in the, the Greek alphabet. That is the New Testament. So why are people saying Jesus? Because it just stuck. I remember using the Hebrew expression Hamashiach in, uh, to a Christian. And that Christian said, what are you talking about? I said, Hamashiach. What is that? I said, the Messiah. He said, well, why don't you say Messiah? I said, well, I just did. But in Hebrew. <laughs> I wasn't getting smart. I just, I'm trying to teach. But that bothered him. It bothers many today if they hear others not use the name Jesus. So if I would say things like uh, Isis with the I, they would lose their minds. So we need to stop and think. Our best approach is to approach the Father in prayer and ask him for his wisdom, his guidance, and his understanding. We cannot rely upon our own. We can't rely upon uh, other individuals, uh, these preachers and pastors and human beings out here who think they know. And I include myself in that mix because I am a flawed, imperfect human being. But I will encourage persons to approach the Father in prayer in the name of, the office of, his son, the one that he sent. And ask him for his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge, and his discernment. Those are treasures that do not rust. They're more valuable than any material possessions that you may hold. This is R. Jerome Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.